present before you a case of a 26 year old who presented to us with complaints of non appearance of secondary sexual characteristics like increase in the penile size, pubic hair, and male characteristics. So, on asking further, uh, he revealed to us that he had lethargy for the past one year. He also had increased thirst and nocturia for the same duration. There was no history of constipation or cold intolerance. There was no history of mumps, gender trauma. There was no history of anosmia. No history of any neonatal illness or any hospital admission. There was no history of headache, vomiting or diplopia. On general examination, the faces, uh, he had a cherubic faces and his BP was on the lower side. So we have the picture also on the right side of a 26 year old male who appears as a small kid. This is a very, very delayed presentation, yes. which is not unusual because many of these cases are often missed. Because a lot of people have got so much message that if you have CDGP, just wait, it will progress and that's what happens. But this was a very, very unfortunate picture. What do you think, Sian, of a 26 year old male with this sort of a face? It's an infantile face and he has no facial hair. So this is typically like a cherubic face, yeah. like a GHD. So this clearly is a typical picture of a multiple purity hormone deficiency, which one can diagnose pretty much on the face value itself. Yeah. And at 26 years, it yes. cannot be CDGP. Yes. Sir, but uh, on anthropometry, we got a height of 154 centimeter. Mm -hmm. uh, but the problem was that his parents were not present at that time and we didn't have an idea of the MPH and but according to him his parents were much taller than him, both of them so we can uh, assume that he was also having growth deficiency for that genetic potential his weight was on the lower side on genital examination we found that the SPL of 5 cm and his testes were prepubertal and there was no pubic hair just stop there yes sir. So now the most important thing to look at in a child with delayed, in a boy with delayed puberty are two things. And you can make a diagnosis right there, what you're dealing with. The first thing is pubic hair. So in this case, pubic hair is not there. So CDGP is likely or unlikely? Uh, unlikely. 26 years, unlikely. But if it was 14 years, this could still be CDGP. Second thing is that isolated general deficiency is out. So you are saying minus 5.53 which sounds a bit unusual because his height is 154 for I got. Yes sir. So this should be much lower. So Because uh, the, the mean adult height is 170. So this you have done for female I believe. Yes, there may be an error because 154 for an adult male is definitely below minus 2 SPS. Yes, There's no confusion on this. So he is short and he has got no pubic hair. So this basically means that this is not an isolated general deficiency. Isolated general deficiency classified typically by Kalaman syndrome will be tall. And they will have pubic hair because a dinarchy would have happened. So this is a very classical clue to me that this is most likely a multiple pituitary hormone deficiency. And that is very clear. Now why can't this be klein syndrome? First of all, uh, klein syndrome are taller. Yeah. They have the mm -hmm. And uh, pubic hair will be there. Yes. And so they will have some development. The of the and then I think they yes. So this is uh, on the face value, we said this is MPHT. Here, if you just tell me one thing about how the test is spent, that will make the diagnosis final. They would have been soft. So this is a classic presentation of a small, soft test without pubic hair in a short child. MPHT, nothing else. So I think this is pretty, pretty obvious. Is it congenital or acquired? Yes, sir. That's the issue. So what do you think? Sir, such a late presentation, the congenital will mainly have many other morphological features. Without... They would have died by this time. Yes. Mostly if it was that severe congenital. And he is not that short. Yes. Mani, we have a child who comes to us with 120. You remember that child? Abdul. Abdul child, very short MPHT. This is Usman, Mohammed Usman, you saw his entry. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. He was 120. So that is congenital MPHD. 154 will not be able to achieve without GH in this setting. So this means that something happened maybe around 12 years, 11 years. This is an acquired MPHD. So this is what we want to do. You learn is to just use your clinical cues and make a diagnosis. Investigations are just there to confirm. 
So this is very clearly a genial deficiency, a multiple pituitary hormone deficiency, uh, in which probably there is a growth hormone involved. Do you think there is a cortisol involved as well? So because he was complaining of lethargy. Anything weakness. else? If his ACTH was normal, he would have had pubic hair development. So there is also an objective evidence. That's a subjective thing. Lethargy, weakness, okay. Everybody is lethargic, weakness, that's fine. But if you don't have a pubic hair, that also suggests to you very clearly that this child actually has a ACTH deficiency. So this is a classic MPHD. Because its height is 154, this is an acquired MPHD. So now you go forward from there. On systemic examination, he had no visual field effects, no cranial nerve involvement, neither any motor or sensory loss. Uh, we aren't thinking of any uh, congenital causes at the present, but still uh, but, uh, we look for any craniofacial abnormalities or any hearing loss. The investigations between the bone age of 16 to 18 years. Yes, so that basically means that he had some development there. Yes. The other thing is that sometimes they get injections and all from outside. And some Ayurvedic homeopathic medications may have testosterone, oral testosterone. But so this most likely is an acquired pathology. The sodium was on the higher side. Uh, TSH was low. LH, FSH. FT4 units are what? FT4 in uh, international. FT4 is low. So this is a low FT4, pico moles per liter. Low FT4 with a normal TSH. And LH is low. FSH is low. Cortisol is low, testo is low. I'll just hold on there. So if you interpret these results, what do you think? This is, what about thyroid? This is? So uh, TSH is uh, low for the age and uh, the patient was also being treated with FT4. So this so is central hypothyroidism. Yes. What about uh, cortisol? So cortisol is low, sir. Four, Hugely low. Yes, sir. 4 is like, like in our units, 4 is the normal unit is normal. So normal. less than 138. Yes, 4 is like 0. And his ACTH should have been more than 300 if he had an actual primary adrenal substance. So this is classic ACTH deficiency. There is a allergen FSA deficiency. This is very severe MPHD, which we already know. GH we have not done, but most likely that will also be low. Now prolactin is not low, not high. So it doesn't give you much on the clue. So it's not a necrosis. If it was a pituitary necrosis, your prolactin will be zero. So there is something else which is there. So what will you do now? You have to do a yes, sir. MRI, of course. The MRI revealed the solid cystic supracellular and supracellular space occupying lesion, which was suggestive of a cranial pharyngioma. We know that the and your sodium is one forty. Yes, sir. So what does it mean? DI. So he had DI, but that was being masked by hypocortical. Yes. Sir. So that is what is coming out. There. So the diagnosis of the case was an acquired multiple pituitary hormone deficiency due to a cranial pharyngioma. Now, coming to the... So I think the big message here is that if you have any child who is not having pubertal development, always work up carefully. It is not just that CDGP is the most common, nothing to be done in boys. You can have, this is the biggest message from this case, craniopharyngioma, this is life-threatening disease, was missed in this child for such a long time. So coming to the etiology of an acquired MPHD, uh, it can occur due to uh, mass lesions like a craniopharyngioma in this case. Or it can also occur due to other insults like trauma, infection, radiation, apoplexy, or any infiltrative disorders like histiocytosis, hypothesitis, or sarcoidosis. Now, uh, so in this case, there is no trauma, surgery, radiation gone. Histiocytosis is unlikely, two to five years of the presentation. Hypophysitis, boys, is rare. Typical presentation is more with ACTH deficiency. It presents mostly after 15 years, so there will be no puberty, will be already be there. Out. So mostly, then 5 to 14, as I said, cranio becomes very, very important. And germinoma also presents more with DI rather than this sort of picture. This is like complete hypothalamus gone. So coming to a cranial pharyngioma, it is the most common intracranial lesion associated with MPHD. Gen as I said, generally presents between 5 to 14 years of age. The GHD is a more common presentation, but that as the child presented late, most likely the growth uh, hasn't been compromised that much. And the location, as in our case, was a supracellular and cellular mass. And the diagnosis is made by an MRI finding and a surgery is the mainstay of treatment. So this is the picture of the uh, patient before and after treatment. 
and he has been very non compliant also so it's not just the fault of the physician like he has i think come for the first time yes since that time so and this was around 10 years this so if you see he is actually looking more sick there is a puffiness which is there he is not taking his medicines properly so this is a typical phase of hypopituitarism like that uh, typical cortisol deficiency that causes a puffiness fluid uh, retention which will improve with a proper treatment and he also has di now post surgery i think yes so the take home message is uh, never to delay the work up of a case of a delayed puberty so i think this is a very important case to uh, to basically highlight